Hello and welcome back to the Fluctus Channel. Though the East African country of Kenya has few resources, one thing they do have in abundance is animal manure. Combined with food waste and agricultural residues, this renewable source of energy can be transformed into fuel for cooking, heating, and more. The process begins by gathering animal manure. Manure is rich in carbon and nitrogen, which are key ingredients for producing biogas. However, in order to convert the manure into gas, it must be allowed to decompose within a biogas system. This project here, biogas, I started using it. Okay, I installed it in the year 2019, okay, to Corona. We have a project going around. We have some people marketing biogas, Nikaenda, Nikaangalia. I loved it. So this one, it is called Systema 20. This is from a company called Systema. Once collected, the manure is fed into an inlet tank. This feeds into a rubber bladder, where the material undergoes a process called anaerobic digestion. Microbes inside the reactor break down the organic matter, producing a mixture of methane, carbon dioxide, and other gases. You collect around uh, 50 kilos of cow dung in the morning. You, there's a feeder at the back there, and then you collect also water. So depending on the number of kilos you have collected, you add water two times of what you have collected. Adding water to the inlet makes it easier to feed the mixture into the tank. Weighing down the bags with tires or other objects creates pressure, allowing the produced gas to flow more easily. It's only very fast when it is hot or when it is warm. So when uh, during daytime, you find uh, the system is growing very fast. As simple as the system is, it is remarkably effective. The most complex part of the system is the regulator. This connects the tank to the hose while filtering out harmful byproducts, like hydrogen sulfide. Turning the system on and off is as simple as opening and closing a valve. With the gas flowing, farmers can go about their lives as if they were hooked up to a standard public utility line. For me, I've seen it's uh, profitable. We don't need to worry how to light a fire in the morning. Okay, for my family, they use it in doing all those cooking. We have students who are going to school. They can easily cook for themselves. Even me, if I come home and I arrive, there's nobody around home. I don't struggle look, going around looking for firewood. It's just like any other cars. Inside the home, the hose connects directly to a gas-powered stove with another valve for controlling the flow of the gas. Thanks to the abundant resources their farms produce, rural families can enjoy the same cooking comforts as their urban counterparts. This simple setup allows for hassle-free cooking all year round. The system is, okay, from my opinion, is an affordable one and it is convenient. 
because once you have installed, there's no other activity you require. What is only required of you is to feed the cow dung. Though it may seem inconsequential to people living in cities, these biogas systems have changed the lives of countless Kenyans. Yet, this is just one of the ways people have found to get more use from the things around them. In places where electricity, generators, and other complex machines are scarce, innovative people are finding new ways to power production facilities, machinery, and other tools. For instance, a car tire can be easily modified into a flywheel mechanism to operate equipment in the absence of a generator or electricity. In this way, the car provides a quick and easy solution to a problem that would otherwise be far more expensive to solve. Using this method, this flour mill is able to save thousands of dollars on equipment. This is vital in countries that simply don't have the buying power of their Western counterparts. और हमने ये एक निजाम निकाला है कि इसके साथ हमने कार के साथ और इस तरह की चीजों के साथ हमने डिफरेंट चीजें चलाई हैं इसमें से एक ये चक्की है इस चक्की के साथ हम कार के साथ या कोई भी चीज जो हमारे घर में मौजूद है बजाय इसके कि हम ट्रैक्टर का इंतजाम करें या कोई और मशीनरी लेके आए हम जो हमारे पास मौजूद चीज है जिसको हम डिफरेंट पर्पस के लिए इस्तेमाल करते हैं उसी चीज को हम इसके इस्तेमाल में लेके आए कि हम अपना जो घर का निजाम है वो इसके साथ चला सकें ये इको फ्रेंडली भी है और ये इजी टू यूज भी है The results of this innovative approach means locals can grind flour and operate other simple machines with minimal cost and effort Even if there is only one car in the village everyone can benefit from this simple invention. Gasoline may not be free, but neither are generators or other forms of electricity. It only takes a few minutes to produce high quality flour. This is collected in a sleeve, which can be poured into virtually any container. With this solution, the entire village can have regular access to bread. In other parts of the world, people are still incorporating stone age tools into modern solutions. One prime example is the process of making clay stoves in Southeast Asia. These stoves are typically made from single blocks of clay, which are quarried deep underground. Before they can be extracted, they must first be cut to size. Wet clay is very soft because the water acts as a lubricant.
With nothing but water and a few simple hand tools, these miners can cut an entire block in just a few minutes. Because the material is so elastic, it rarely splits or crumbles during cutting. If the miner encounters problems, the solution is typically just to add water. The tools used do not even have to be particularly sharp. Once the piece has been cut, miners will use a hammer and ax to actually separate the stone from the rest of the mineral deposit. After several minutes, the block will begin to break free. The result is almost perfectly rectangular. It is also light enough for a single miner to move it. But before it can be brought to the surface, the worker will use the extraction tools to carve the block into a rough shape. Yeah. Itu apa? Runtuh, ya. tiangnya kalau ini kan tipis runtuh gitu, itu risikonya. Ya ada, rasa khawatir pasti ada, tapi namanya nyari rezeki ya insya Allah gitu aja udah. Shaping it while still in the cave reduces the stove's weight and preserves excess clay. But first, the miner must roll the block out of the main excavation area. Many of these mines stretch for hundreds of feet underground and have been quarried for decades. Once in position, the miner will go about cutting the rough shape of the stove. He first creates a large hollow area in the middle. This is where the stove's cooking surface will be shaped, ensuring it can efficiently hold and heat cookware. Next, several holes are created in the top. This will allow the block to function as an actual stove. Once the basic shape has been achieved, the miner will begin rolling the stove towards the surface. Upon reaching the entryway, he will finally be able to put the stove on his back and walk it out the rest of the way. As soon as he is out safely, another miner will take a turn. Meanwhile, artisans will further refine the stoves. He 
Here, edges are smoothed and hollow sections are carved with hand tools to create a more aesthetically pleasing look. The unique shape of stoves was perfected hundreds of years ago when it was discovered that they burn wood much more efficiently. Clay stoves are not only a necessity, but have evolved into a point of pride for many families across Southeast Asia. The artisans can work quickly to carve a perfect stove in just a few minutes. This is important because the exposed clay is now quickly starting to dry. Remarkably, the artisans can create near-perfect edges and curves without measuring. Many would find it hard to believe that these clay stoves were quarried just hours earlier. Once complete, the formed stoves are left to air dry for several days to weeks, depending on the weather and humidity. The finished stoves are not only functional, they are a priceless piece of cultural art. Once ready, they can be sold at local markets or shipped worldwide. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.